morning. God morning to you. And welcome to another Good Friends. Today we have the person, the being responsible for the show being. His music, the love that comes through the music, that takes the form of the music, the form of the name. Krishnadas, KD, we affectionately call him. Thank you for being here with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. I was reading, again, Chance of a Lifetime, which is one of my favorite books to this day. And I recommend it to everyone. If you that's listening, if you don't have it already, get it. And I'd recommend the Audible version because it is updated. It's newer than the book. Yeah, I rewrote it. <laughs> <laughs> All the, like, it's so good. I just love the little updates, you know, that I can catch. And so there's a, you, in this part of the book, you have just met Maharaji for the first time through your encounter with Ramdas for the first time. And you're driving back home even though he had offered, I believe, for you to stay that night because it was late. You're driving back home because you had to work the next day, like drive a school bus and you start falling asleep. But then like you wake up and you're still on the road. You're still fine. And you start chanting the mantra that he gave you. And you said you're like screaming it all the way home. Can you tell us what the mantra is? I've been sure. curious about yeah. that. Yeah. You know, uh, actually, I pulled over and set my alarm clock. Really? And I, f and I took a nap on the side of the road. Mm. But then I woke up and I was driving. What? Yeah. And I was on the right. I didn't know. I woke up and I didn't know where I was, what I was doing. And I'm, I'm driving and I'm on the right side of the road, and, you know. And, and that's when I went, oh, my God. And then I started <laughs> yell, oh. yelling the mantra. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. And so what I, um, was this mantra? Well, it's a mantra from the Ra Valmiki Ramayana. Mm -hmm. And it's supposedly the mantra that Brahma gives to Rama mm -hmm. so he can conquer Ravana. It's, it's um, Aditya Hurdayam Punyam Sarvshatru Vinashanam. I know that one. I've shared that one on here. That is amazing. I had no idea. Yeah. I had no idea. And, it, and it's funny. Right here. KK wrote it out for me once. That looks like, okay, so that sheet of paper. Here's yeah, a story. That sheet of paper is <laughs> 50 years old. But has it been, has there been a copy made of it? Like copies made of it? I don't know. Maybe I put it up online at one point. I don't know. So look, when I was in Maui, when I met you for the first time, um, it may have been like the third, maybe the third night. Um, I saw that there was not a flower in front of KK's picture. There was a flower in front of Maharaji's picture. There was a flower in front of Sidima's picture, in front of Baba's picture, but not in front of KK's. And I saw that because I was sitting up front jamming with you, uh -huh. right? And so the next morning I got up at five, I go meditate on the beach and on my way back, like to go meditate with Rameshwar Das that morning at like 7 a.m. or something, I saw flowers at my feet and I'm like, oh, great. I took one to take it, to put it in front of KK's picture. And so I go in immediately. There's still no flower in front of his picture. I put the flower down and then I sit down. And within five minutes of sitting, someone hands me a sheet of paper that looked just like that strip you just showed me, same handwriting uh -huh. written in KK's handwriting. And they said, this is what we're going to be meditating on today. And all I could do, like, I felt so much love in my heart because I, one, I knew the mantra. Two, it was KK. Three, I'm like, I've been feeling KK since last night. <laughs> so <laughs> it was really, really serendipitous. Yeah, KK was wonderful. Mm. Wonderful being. That mantra, when you were first given it, by Ram Das, were you able to feel it? You know, like what it was pointing to, that sun in your heart? No, not really. Um, I was already feeling so much connection. I mean, the, the mantra was just a part of everything that I was feeling because when I had walked into that room where he was sitting, mm. that's when I first felt Maharaji. Although that, I didn't know that that's what I was feeling, but that's what I was feeling. So I was very full and feeling connected. I felt like I found that I finally met what I was looking for. 
uh, in life, even though I didn't know what it was yet, but I knew right. I had gotten a taste. And the mantra was a part of that. Mm. But it was more the presence, the powerful, vast presence of, of that being Maharaji that I found myself inside of that uh, for the first time, mm. uh, aware of that for the first time. I heard you recently say that love isn't in the body. It's in the soul. You know, like it's where the body appears to be. I added that part because that's kind of the way I talk about it. it. Can you explain more of how it felt for you that first time versus how it's experienced, you know, today? Like or the last time you sang or the last time you were practicing or even now, if you're in that now, I feel it now. It looks like you do. You're always radiating when I see you. <laughs> The body, you know, we're identified with our bodies, but really there's nothing in the body except the load of shit, you know, <laughs> blood, pus, muscle fiber, flesh. There's no consciousness in the body. Right. Consciousness is of the body. You know, it, it, consciousness runs through, through the nerves. Those are electric impulses. They don't have consciousness. Mm. It's the, the being, or the, you could say the soul, or the, or the true self that f identifies what those things are. That's what awareness is. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> and when the, when the consciousness leaves the body, or what they call death, the body is just a lump, you know? Mm. So it can't be the love. The love is, has to be what brings the life to the body. Mm. And... Um, When we talk about, it's interesting, we talk about things, you know, being inside, like love is inside. Inside what? You know, it's not in here. Where is it? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, we're all inside of that all the time, within that. But we're not, mostly not paying attention. Not aware of that. The habits of our thoughts, and thinking, the stories we believe about ourselves keep us locked away. Mm. But it's there. It's here. It's always here. And we're not here, but it's right. always here. Mm. And that's why we chant. That's why we practice. That's why we chant. That's why we, that's why we have the gift of longing. Mm. It's painful, the bless that gift. Huh? It's painful, what? that gift. It's, it's pain, yeah. it feels like. Oh, yeah. That's a gift, too. Yeah. I try to remember that, you know. I once wrote a song. I said, I have the ego of a lover and it's easy to see. The pain of separation is sweet to me. <laughs> ah, that's gorgeous. <laughs> the pain of separation is sweet to me. That's beautiful. <clears throat> you have met so many beings that you refer to them as. Like I think about... Ananda Maima, and I'm sure so many others that you've encountered in your journeys. And I wonder if this presence that is Maharaji, that is the Christ, that is Ram, did it feel the same when you encountered like Ananda Maima, or I don't know if you met like Satya Sai Baba or any other folks you'd want to share did. about? Did, was it that same quality of love when you were in their presence? You know, Dada was one of Maharaji's great devotees, Dada Mukherjee. Mm -hmm. He was a have former... have his arm reach. It's right here. Yeah, <laughs> right there. Yeah, he yeah. Was, wrote two beautiful books. Mm -hmm. He tells a story. One time, another very, very great saint came to Allahabad. A very, and he really is a very great saint. His name was Deora Hababa. Mm -hmm. And he was actually 270 years old. What? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he lived in... Let's say that you had a neighbor living next door. Right. Who was the guru of your grandpa, grandfather's grandfather's grandfather. And he'd always wow. been there. Everybody knew he'd been there. Wow. It's not a mystery. It's just it wild. wasn't even, <laughs> nobody was surprised. And the guy had been living in this Count de Orojo, the name of a, an area in, in Uttar Pradesh. Mm -hmm. So he'd been there. He was like, you know. 
Florida Bama or Miami Bama. Right, or, right. Yeah, that's yeah. what that's the kind. So anyway, so he came to Allahabad, and one of the devotees who came to see Maharaji at Dada's house was also a devotee of Dewara. Mm. And he came and begged Dada, Dada, you must come, you must meet him, you must come and have his darshan. And Dada was not interested. He did not want to go anywhere. He, But in order, this guy was so insistent, he didn't want to hurt the guy. So mm. he went and he walked into the room and he pranamed to the Baba from a, the back of the room and then he left. <laughs> and he goes back home. Wow. So as soon as he gets home, of course, Maharaji arrives and sits down. So Dada, what's new? Mm. What have you been doing? Oh, Deora Baba's here. Did you go see him? Did you mention my name? We know each other for so long. He would have blessed you with you. Did you go see him? Did you mention my name? What? You just you pronounced and left? Why? <laughs> What's wrong with you, Dada? And Dada says, he gets very emotional. He says, I only have one head and it's already been given. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. So you asked me the question, you know, I loved all these saints. They were just... I enjoyed their presence. I, I, I felt many times I felt great blessings coming from them. But for me, it all happens inside of Maharaji. Mm. He's everywhere. He's the, he's the space in which everything happens for me. I love it when you talk about that energy, like in that song, like heart as wide as the world. It immediately puts me back into that, that spaciousness. Like you could, in, you escape into that spaciousness again. You are being that spaciousness again. I remember asking you in Maui, like, is Maharaji who we think he is? And you told me the story about a Ma. And I'm wondering if you would share it here <coughs> today as well. Uh, this story is... <laughs> Very interesting. You know, Mr. Tawari, my Indian father, had been with Maharaji for 40 years. He was a great yogi. Everywhere we went, all the Babas would go, oh, look, you're very lucky to know him, they would say to me. And Tawari would go, oh, no, no, no. But <laughs> he was a great yogi. And, but he loved, and he loved magic. He loved all the Siddhis. He just enjoyed them very much. He was always wanting to see them. So, so one time he was in um, Maharaji and he were in Mumbai. And they were driven to the edge of this huge slum, you know, that goes for miles. It's just unbelievable. And so Maharaji gets out of the car and they start walking. And Maharaji's leading. He's walking this way. Then he makes a right. Then he makes a left. Then he walks down. And he makes a right. And another left. And another left. I mean, just into the center of the slums. And he comes up, they come up to this one little hut that's made probably from flattened uh, aluminum cans, you know, mm. ghee cans. And he, he walks in to the hut and inside the hut, there's an old lady standing, holding a plate of hot food. Just standing there with this plate of hot food waiting for Maharaji. Obviously, she knew he was coming. Yeah. And obviously, there are no telephones, nothing. So she obviously had something going on. Mm. And so Maharaji laughs, Ma, and he sits down and she starts feeding him. <clears throat> As she's feeding him, Maharaji says, Mama, show him, show him that. He loves those things, show him. And she's going, no, Baba, no, I don't want to do that. No, no, Baba. Hep, show her, Ma. Yep, show her. So, okay, Baba. And she just goes like this and starts pulling shit out of the air, like little <laughs> statues and malas, who knows what, you know, just pulling stuff out of the air and throwing this at Tawari. Wow. My heart, you're just laughing. Wow. This is a little old lady living in the slums in a house full with nothing. And she has we all these cities. Unbelievable. Ah, uh, it's so good. <sighs> Have you ever doubted not just your experiences those three years you know in india with maharaji but just during all of this time you know like does doubt still swim in to your awareness and when it does what do you do i doubt myself all the time 
can I do this? Can I do anything to help myself? Why am I so fucking insecure and, and, and unable to do anything to get myself in the right place? That, that I doubt myself all the time. Do I doubt him? No. Mm. That's like, if you look in the mirror, do you doubt what you see? You, so there's something there, you see it. So there's, you can't yeah. doubt it. Right. You might not know what it is, but there's no doubt what's there is there. So yeah, no, that's a, that's the blessing of faith. And that faith comes from grace. Yeah. Just like St. Paul said, by grace was I saved through faith. Mm. It's grace first. And grace it manifests first. as faith. And, or, what did KK call that kind of grace? Was it a hot 2K? Kripa? A hetuko. A hetuko. I think it means, means yeah. causeless grace. Of course, no, grace is causeless. If, if it could be, mm -hmm. you can't earn grace. Nobody deserves grace. Grace is grace. It wouldn't be grace if we deserved it. Yeah. It wouldn't be grace if we earned it. Then it's, then it's something you get. Grace is just grace. There's no explaining it, why it happens to whom. It's, some, it's a real mystery. I'm just, I imagine somebody understands, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're talking about grace. I came across your music, not for the first time in 2020, like it felt, but it was in 2018 when I was going through my transition, deciding whether or not to be in St. Louis or California or move to Florida. And I heard your Sita Ram song and I heard it and I could feel something there, but I'm like, eh, this isn't for me, you know? And of course, 2020 and beyond up to this day, like you are my background music. You are my foreground music. It's always chanting. The name is always present. Also, though, you sent me um, a book about a Russian saint, Saint Seraphim of Sarov. Have I read that book? No, <laughs> not all no. of it. Parts of it. You uh -huh. told me to read Larry Brilliant's book. Have I read it? No. What is it about us where we don't follow instruction? <laughs> like where we, it's hard for us to do what I know in my heart, I should read those books. There's a part of me that doesn't want to read Larry's book because I know he went through a struggle, you know, with his faith and with a child. And that's scary. And even yeah. at the retreat, you kept telling me like, go make sure you go to Ram Dev's talk about death. And I'm like, I don't want to, I want to go sit at the beach and just wait to sing again tonight. <laughs> You're like, no, go listen to these talks. What is it about us that, you know, is so resistant, even though you know what would help us? No, it's not resistance and it's not personal. It's just our karmas. Yeah. And so we, we, when you're younger, you live with like, you know, death is some idea and happens to other people. And maybe imagine someday I won't be here. Maybe who knows? But when your body starts decomposing and you can't get out of bed in the morning, then you start getting, whoa, okay, something's going on here. It's like, <laughs> like one of my friends said, they're firing at our regiment, <laughs> you know, and, and Roshi Joan Halifax said, we're working ourselves to the front of the line. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. closer we get to the front of the line, the more we we understand, we become uh, aware that maybe we should get our shit together. Yeah. But until until you're thirsty, you don't drink. It's okay. That's just the way it is. And um, you can't. We can't change people, and we can't even change ourselves. We can only do the best we can. There's no other option. And you know what? Everybody is doing the best they can. Mm. it's not for us to judge some people seem to wake up very early in life and and other people get a little hit and then forget then get mm. another little hit then forget that's where most of us are at you know yeah you know there's a story about indra <clears throat> he he's he screwed some, some saint's wife or something like that, some yogi's wife. So he, mm -hmm. he got banished from heaven and he had to live as a pig. Wow. And when, when the time came for him to die as a pig and be, come, go, move, go back to heaven, he didn't want to go. He, he was just enjoying the mud and the shit and, <laughs> and the other little piglets and his That's little good. kill. You know, he yeah. was just so much into it. He just, wait a minute, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. 
they had to pull them out of the body to go. Yeah, that's so appropriate. That's good. <laughs> I've never heard that story. That's good. So I, I, I can relate to that story. Yeah. yeah, me too. Can I ask why you, and this is for the person that's listening to in case they grew up Christian, that book about St. Seraphim, who I have quoted and bought other smaller books about oh. him. Why did you send me that book? Why do you have that book on your suggested reading list on your website? Because what it's is just... Because the, because real saints were everywhere, are everywhere in, on the planet, in every different culture. Yeah. They're not only in India, they're not only in Tibet, they're not only in, in, in the one country or another. You know, they've been and always will be mm. all, through the, all through humanity to, because there's people to help. Yeah. And Saint Seraphim was just, my God. It was, he, he spoke directly to... To Mary, to the Virgin, yes, you know, when she manifested him, she she spoke to him, and uh, it, it it was unbelievable. And he was so selfless and so egoless. It was amazing. It's just the story is so beautiful. I remember reading about his experiences with the mother, and I actually got a copy of the icon that he had in his cell that he kept in his uh -huh. cell. And it's on my altar now, along with everybody, the whole gang, you know, mm -hmm. and now Mother Mary is there too. It's gorgeous. Yeah. There's a prayer I came across not too long ago that said, Mother Mary, be a mother to me now. And that felt mm -hmm. good. I like to say that sometimes instead of just, mm -hmm. you know, I'm listening. In Jerusalem, and, the, yeah. my, we went, of course, to Golgotha, you know, this point where mm -hmm. Jesus yes. was 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 crucified and then mm -hmm. there's the the cave where they brought his body but we're, and that was very powerful but the place i liked the most mm -hmm. was mary magdalene's grotto church down below the ground oh, there's this there. down into this grotto is whoa it was really? beautiful mm -hmm. yeah really really a nice place really beautiful place strong place yeah I'm curious about your present practice. Like I see you and we sing with you and your events, but on a day where you don't have to serve us, like how do you serve yourself? You know, what does your practice look like? You know, I, I do as little as possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I do. Usually I do some pranayama. That's what I do every day. Mm -hmm. Most I try to do asanas every day. Sit for a while every day and do some japa every day. Mm -hmm. Basically, you know, nothing to nothing to. Believe me, I, I don't exert myself barely. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is, I waste so much time. Mm -hmm. I remember you saying recently in a talk where you were like, if we actually believed that by taking the name Ram, everything would be accomplished, we'd be saying it, we'd be chanting it all the time. He's yeah, like, well, we don't. You said, we don't. <laughs> he said so many times to us that from the repetition of the name, everything is accomplished. Everything is accomplished. And he said, these people, the Westerners, they don't need yoga. They can get everything through devotion. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, and when I asked Siddhi Ma, I said, Ma, you know, should I meditate or should I chant? Mm -hmm. So she said, well, what do you like to do? What do I like to do? My mother never told me that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, she said, she said in 40 years with Maharaji, never once did he ask her to meditate. Mm. He asked her to repeat the name, to do the japa, and to serve others. Wow. And that's what she did. And then, then I said to her, well, you know, Maharaji used to tease us. He used to say, I have the keys to the mind. I mm -hmm. could turn your minds against me. And he would laugh. You know, and we go, Papa, don't do that. No, don't do that. <laughs> right, nah. right, right. You know, I could, he said, I could transfer you. Transfer, oh, Jaiga, I'll transfer you. And we, go, and we would think, my God, can you imagine? We wake up one morning and, we, you know, and we say, like, what am I doing in India? I'm going home. 
you know, I want to see the Mets play or something like that. Terrible. And then you right. leave. It's terrible. And you just leave him, you know, because he, because he transferred you. See, he did have the keys to the mind. He does have the keys to the mind. Mm -hmm. So I said to Ma, okay, he says he has the keys to the mind. To me, that means that I am where he has placed me, where he wants me to be. Mm -hmm. If he has the keys to the mind, then I am doing what he wants me to do. So is it all his doing, his grace? Or is my effort required? What's the deal? And she gave the best answer. She says, it's all grace, but you have to act like it isn't. Ah, oh, so good. That's perfect. Huh. You have to act. You know, like they it say isn't. it's grace is it's always raining, but if you don't cup your hands, you can't catch the drops to drink. Exactly. So practice is a way of cupping our hands. Which mantra yeah. do you turn to when you get scared? Like when things get, when Maya gets loud, what's the one you pick up? Like when it's always happen? loud. When it's extra loud. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's always extra loud. <laughs> when it's but extra, when I, extra when, loud. When I'm really stuck in something, and I need to shift, and I can't take it anymore, and I, if something has to change, then I'll do the Hanuman Chalisa, then I'll do 100 Nate Chalisas. Because that's, he, I was told about that practice when I was first got to India, at least within the first year. Wow. And I was also told that you do it, and before you do it, you ask for a boon. Mm -hmm. You ask, for something that you want and I, I figured well I ought to ask for what I want the most yeah. right so I asked for what I want the most want the most and then I did it the first time in 1971 wow. and it took me like 15 hours because I sang the whole you know I didn't realize you didn't have to actually sing the whole thing you could chant it read it you know mm -hmm. it, it didn't have to be all musical 15 hours, 16 hours, something like that. Wow. But yeah. You started before sunrise that day? Probably not. <laughs> I, the only time I see sunrise is if I stay up late. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, you're a musician. You told me to do this practice. I don't know if you remember. And I don't think I've ever huh. shared this. Maybe on Patreon I shared, but in March of 2021, I did it for the first time. You told me to pick a Tuesday or a Saturday. You told me to start as early as I could. And, you know, I have kids, so I had to start before sunrise. And it took from like 2 a.m. until like 2 or 3 p.m. because you told me that I could read some and chant some and I sang some. Mm -hmm. And it was maybe May when I had like the full idea of this good morning show. And you know, I asked for a boon. It wasn't this. I didn't know I wanted to do a podcast. I just knew I wanted to be of service. And I guess, you know, things unfold as they do. Yes, they do. I tried to do it again recently, but maybe my karma, it wouldn't let me. It's a lot. <laughs> it takes a long time. Yeah. It's a long it's, time. Uh, yeah. I mean, once again, we think we're doing it. But if we, if we can do any practice, if we really can turn towards the light a little bit, it's only because of grace. It's not our own. Well, it depends how you look at it, but that's the way I look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've thought like some, well, maybe this weekend I have Sunday free. Maybe I'll do 40 mm -hmm. chalices. And then, you know, it's Monday and I go, oh. Right. I do that a lot. <laughs> do that often. <laughs> At least I know it's not just me. That's good to know. I saw yeah. a story in Love Everyone recently, and I can't remember the guy because I'm not familiar with him, and I think he's since transitioned. But he had went into the jungle a year after Maharaji's Ma Samadhi, and so he's out in the jungle and he sees a tiger. And he's terrified and Maharaji appears and he's laughing and he says, chant Mahatma Chalisa. And he starts <clears> chanting <throat> and he's still scared and he's singing loud. And eventually like he falls asleep 
And then he wakes up and there's no tiger. And he said he chanted the Hanuman Chalisa every morning, like for the rest of his life. He might have been Ram Giri or something like that. Yeah. I thought that was beautiful. Like, and when I talked to Nina too, she talked about it being like a shield of protection. Yeah. Yeah, it is, but I don't think of it that way. How do you think of it? I just think of it as entering more deeply into him. Uh, if he's not protecting us, then we don't have a chance anyway. So there's no sense begging for protection. Yeah. For, if we're not already protected, we'll never be protected. So we're begging to see that we are protected, right? That we're already safe and under the blanket? Possibly, but that could be just another ego trip too, you know? Yeah. You know, just forget about it. The only thing that matters is love. Yeah. And it doesn't matter, all this other stuff. Some people have a lot of fear, but that's, yeah, that's more, it's not spiritual fear, it's emotional fear. Right. And those things can be worked on. And, and there's a lot of ways to work with those kind of uh, issues. Mm. But as far as spiritual fear, there's, you know, uh, you know, I'll tell you a story. So I have a friend who his father and grandfather on both sides of the family were devotees of Maharaji. Mm -hmm. And he himself met Maharaji when he was a boy. Last time he saw him when he was eight. <clears throat> and after Maharaji disappeared, this, my friend's mother, Indian, they're Indian people. My friend's mm -hmm. mother uh, met another very great saint. And um, became his devotee also for many years. And the saint was very sweet, very kind to him. And then he would go to India to meet his mother and they would go to visit the saint. And the saint was very loving, very sweet. Mm -hmm. And my friend always wanted to ask this other saint whether he knew Maharaji or not, mm -hmm. but he never asked him. He never got the chance. And then he was with the saint very close to the time that the saint left the body. The main, this, this saint was very sick, very ill. He lost all this weight. He looked very, very. And so my friend didn't have the heart to ask him that question that he'd always wanted to ask him. So there they are. There's, he's sitting with the saint and there's one other man there. And he, he just said to himself, I'm, no, I'm not going to bother him. I'm not going to ask him. So the saint turns to his, this other devotee and says, do you know his guru? Says to the other man. And the saint just says, his guru is of such a stature that not even the heat of the fire could dream of touching those he protects. Mm. there's a phrase in India, in Hindi, that means that. And it just means it's so far beyond, that not even the, the heat of the fire, forget the fire, but not even the warmth of the fire could dream of touching anyone that he protects. <sighs> That's beautiful. So, I think about you back, you know, when you were with Maharaji and he had kicked all the kirtan walas out and you had to go and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Ram all day. And I wonder why that mantra is the one that goes, like when I was in Kenshi last year, you know, every ashram <clears throat> I went to, it's, it's going, it's being sung live from morning until night. And I wonder yeah. what it is about that one. And was it his instruction for that to be the one? I don't know, but Maharaji in his temples, he, when it, especially when he was there, he always mm -hmm. had kirtanwalas chanting uh, the, what they called Maha Mantra. Mm -hmm. In 1971, we were in Vrindavan with him. And um, one of the guys in our, one of the Westerners, came from Hawaii and he one and 
one of the first groups of ISKCON devotees came to Brindavan for the first time. And they were led by this Hawaii, the West, uh, a guy from Hawaii who was the big guru of them. And my friend knew him. So he invited them to come sing, chant in the temple for Maharaja. So they came with the drums and the shakers and the thing, and they were singing and dancing and everything, you know. And Maharaji was, hey, love me. And he turns to me in the middle of me and he says, Hare Krishna, Mahamadra. Like it was a big secret, you know. And I go, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we used to just stand there and go, like, Sri Ram, you know. You know, yeah. we didn't have anything, you know, we didn't know what to do. So after they left, he reached into his dhoti and he pulls out a 50 rupee note and he hands it to me and said, go buy a drum. So from that 50 rupees, that's why we're here today. Wow. <laughs> that's cool. That started you the whole a drum. thing. Do you play the drums? He, he said, I didn't play. I bought, I bought it and I yeah. wouldn't even play it. I wanted him to touch it first. So he ah. did. And then he said, who will teach you? I said, Hanuman. And that's why I don't play the drums. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I can keep a simple little beat, but I'm not a drummer. Yeah. I don't have much rhythm at all. I would not be a good drummer. That's amazing. I love that mantra. It comes here often. It's my main practice. Every, every, yeah, every, everywhere in temple and Brindavan and Kenshi, Mm -hmm. while the temple is open every day from about four in the morning till 11 at night. Yeah. The Kirtan Walls would sing. And it's interesting because, um, in, in the Ram, peop, Ram people sing it with the Hare Ram first, and the Krishna people sing it with the Hare Krishna first. Exactly. And also the Shiva people sing it with the Hare Ram first. Mm-hmm. So it's just the same thing. You know, people looking for things to fight about, but there's nothing to fight about. Exactly. Yeah, I've went down those rabbit holes. Speaking of rabbit holes, uh, here's one that this mind likes to chew on. So Hanuman was always, always had Ram on his mind and his heart, on his lips, Sri Ram, J Ram, J J Ram. Baba was constantly chanting Ram, Ram, Ram. Should we just be taking the name Ram or doing Sri Ram, J Ram or Hare Krishna, Hare Ram, or should we be chanting the Hanuman Chalisa? All the names are the same. Mm-hmm. He said every line of Chalisa is Mahamantra. Mahamantra means the name. All the names are the names of the one of which all these other forms are just forms of the one. And the Doesn't presence that you name. dissolve the, in is always huh? the same. Like you don't feel a different presence. There's just the one presence you're feeling across the board, well, whether you're singing to Shiva or to, you know, that, Hanuman. Not necessarily. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. You always tell me that. And I love it. And I think of that all the time. But I'm like, I, it feels you know, like it's the same presence for me. That it It's the same presence, but the forms are slightly different, you know, yeah. very different, you know. Uh, but for Westerners, well, for, 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 we don't grow up in that culture. So, right. But still, we could be attracted to the to different forms. Some people think Radha Krishna is the thing, and some people think Sita Ram. Some people think, you know, uh, Shiva Shakti. All mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't matter. Whatever turns you on is what's good. So, and it can change. Why should you do the same thing every day? Yeah. I come back to that all the time. I hear your voice in my head whenever I'm going down those rabbit holes about like Shiva Shakti and, you know, Sita Ram. Then I hear you saying, it's all one. I see Baba holding up that one finger. And it's like all the stories are so entertaining. It's like being that pig in the mud again, right? And Mm -hmm. I'm so entertained by the stories and trying to connect the stories. And, you know, Christ is like Hanuman in this way. Then I stop. And I'm Mm -hmm. like, there's just this. (laughs) There's just this. And it doesn't matter what I'm singing. You know, I'm here already. Yeah, it's a habit of overthinking. Yeah. And I can catch it sometimes. It. Sometimes huh? it get, I said sometimes it gets away from me. I can catch it sure. usually. Yeah. That's why we're here. Yeah. So I'm happy you are here. And I want right now to tra- like transition into this moment where you guide us into the presence that is Maharaji, that is Ram, that is Christ, that is Krishna. And 
I would like for you to do Sri Ram J Ram, but sometimes you mm-hmm. feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. So why don't you do what you feel and we'll just vibe and I'll mute. Okay. You. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat>
Sitaram Ram 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 Sitaram Ram 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 Sitaram Ram 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 Shri Ram Je Ram Je 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 Ram Sita Ram, Sita Ram, Sita Ram, yes, Sita Ram, Sita Ram, Sita Ram, Sita Ram, yes, Sita Ram, Sri Ram, Je Ram, Je Je Ram, Sri Ram, Je Ram, Je Je Ram. Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram, Shri 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 Ram Je Ram. Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Je Siya Ram Je Ahamma Sankhata Mocham Vamedham Jaisi Aram Je Baba Hanuma Sankhata Mocham Vanedham Jaisi Aram Je Baba Hanuma Karuna Sagar Kupanedham Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Shri Ram Je Ram Je Je Ram Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a transparency for him, for love constantly. Like, I can't thank you enough for helping me find my practice. Like, nowhere feels like home, nothing feels like home. But when I'm singing, when I'm taking the name, when I'm hearing the name, that's about as close as I get. <laughs> and I wake up happy and excited to practice more, however that looks, even if it's just singing along with you, sitting down at the altar, which when I do, life is, it flows a little smoother, which made me think of another question. Why does life appear to fall apart <laughs> when I'm not yeah. doing my, my chanting practice? Yeah. It, 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 it pushes things back in perspective, you know, automatically. For a minute. Yeah. Briefly. But that's a good thing. I'll take that minute anytime. Well, thank you for spending this time with good us. To see you. I appreciate you. Good to see you too. Yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> and we'll chat soon. Take good care. Um, uh... If this episode helped you feel good, helped you feel God and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and screenshot it and send it to me for a free gift and follow me on Patreon so I can see you 
so I can see your smile.